So welcome to this session on Introduction to Searching Himmelfarb Library Databases. So the objectives for this session. So by the end of this session, you should be able to identify the benefits of searching multiple databases for a research topic, list the steps involved in conducting a literature search, and construct and execute search strategies using keywords. When you want to do research uh, through the Himmelfarb databases, you always want to start out at the Himmelfarb homepage, which is himmelfarb.gwu.edu. So a couple things on the homepage I'd like to point out. So you'll see at the top of the page, there's that big search box that says find books, articles, and more. So I would recommend that you don't use that box and that instead you go into individual databases, which are listed on the left side of the page under popular resources. Mm -hmm. So going into individual databases will let you do a more strategic focused search. Whereas if you search the search box at the top of the page, it searches a lot of our resources at once and you get back tons of results that sometimes can be overwhelming. So I would suggest that you go into individual databases. So Himmelfarb subscribes to over 100 databases. You can get to all of the databases by clicking on that All Databases link that's uh, highlighted there on the left. And we have them kind of broken down by topic area. But even though there's over 100, my guess is that the ones that you're going to be using are the ones that are listed here right on the home page. So probably just a handful of the ones that we have. And so I've highlighted PubMed, Medline, CINAHL, and Scopus. Um, which are the ones that we're going to talk about tonight. So in the context of using the databases and doing a literature search, um, I wanted to talk about kind of the steps that you should think about before you actually jump into the databases. And some of this might be review, but I wanted to talk about it um, in hopes that um, it will relate to what we're talking about tonight. So depending on what your research topic is, you want to think about which databases you want to search. So if you're searching, for example, for nursing literature, CINAHL is a great place to start. You want to think about the keywords and synonyms and controlled vocabulary that relate to your topic that you're actually going to plug into the database. And we'll talk more about this in a minute. And you want to think about, when you run your search, what limits are you going to apply to that search to make it focused? So are you interested in articles, let's say, from the last five years, for example? Perhaps you're interested in only randomized controlled trials and probably only English language articles. Then you're going to go ahead and you run, run your search. Um, and it's going to vary depending on which database you use. And then you're going to take a look at your results and see if you need to make any adjustments. So for this session, this is the question that we're going to use as an example and also when we're doing some practice searches. So the question is, which nursing interventions are found to be effective in avoiding pressure ulcers in critical care patients? So if you were thinking about this question and where you might search for it, what databases might you, might you use? I think if you're doing a comprehensive literature search, it's definitely a good idea to search more than one database. And so I would search CINAHL, I would definitely search PubMed or Medline, and I would also search Scopus. So I think those are good choices. Scopus is a very large multidisciplinary database. So it doesn't focus just on one topic. So it's a really good resource for any topic that you're researching. You know, whereas if it's nursing literature, you know, you'd probably go to CINAHL first, but then you might also want to search Scopus. Scopus is such a big database. Um, and one of the reasons I like it is because I always find content there that I haven't already found in CINAHL, for example. And we'll do a sample search in a little while so you can see exactly what it looks like. So once you have your question, the next thing you want to do, and this is probably to the extreme here, but just to demonstrate my point of that, you want to make a list of keywords and phrases. And if you're using Medline, MeSH or medical subject headings. But for the sake of CINAHL and Scopus, you want to think about the keywords or phrases that relate to your concepts that you're going to actually plug into the database. And I find it helpful to actually physically write it down or make a list like I've shown here. And usually what I'll do is I'll put, you know, one key concept per column 
and then I'll write down just the keywords or the phrases that I'm thinking about. Um, and you want to think about how is the literature out there talking about that subject? So for example, if you look in the middle column, um, the concept that's actually in my question is pressure ulcers. But if you think about the articles that are out there and how they're talking about it, they probably are using the phrase pressure ulcer or pressure ulcers. They might also, though, be calling it pressure sores or bed sores or pressure injuries. And so to capture those articles, you want to think what terms you can plug in that will kind of capture all of those different ways of saying that. And similar with the other concepts. So you want to think about plurals of the words, other words that mean the same thing. Um, and this is just a way of um, being sure that you're thinking broadly about how the articles out there are talking about it so that you can capture the literature that's out there. So one of the things that you can use in CINAHL, and actually in some of the other databases too, but we'll talk about it here in the context of CINAHL, is something called truncation. So if we were searching in CINAHL for articles about ulcers, in order to capture all of the different ways you can think about ulcers, you'd want to use all the different forms of the word. So ulcer, ulcers, ulceration. But you can use a truncation symbol. In this case, it's an asterisk. And you can put it after the beginning part of the word, and that tells the database to look for all the different forms of that word. So in this example, you can type in U-L-C-E-R with an asterisk, and it's going to automatically find all the different forms of the word. So instead of having to type out all those different forms, you can just use the truncation symbol, and it will do that for you. So that's just a little bit of a shortcut there. And then I was talking a minute ago when I showed that chart about thinking about keywords and all the different ways you can think about something. Um, and so how do you build this list? So off the top of your head, try to think of synonyms that you can um, that relate to that key concept. So just whatever you can come up with. Um, the other thing that I like to do if I'm having trouble coming up with synonyms is just run some quick sample searches. Um, so maybe I'll type in pressure ulcer, and I'll see what kinds of articles I get and see in those articles, how are they talking about that term? Um, and then I'll kind of build my list that way. So see how other people are talking about it and add some terms to my own list. And if you're using Medline, and it's okay if you're not familiar with this, um, but Medline uses a controlled vocabulary called medical subject headings. And so similarly, you can do a search in Medline to identify those relevant medical subject headings. And if we have time, we'll do a search in Medline um, later. If you find an article, take a look at that article's medical subject headings because that might give you an idea of other things you should try. And so here's just another example of a word um, and how you, know, you want to be broad and think about different synonyms. So if you were looking for articles related, and this is just one word of a question that related to the word poor, um, you could come up with a whole bunch, and here I, I've just listed four other words that represent the concept of poor. Um, and so, you know, if an article is talking about someone who's impoverished or indigent, maybe they don't use the word poor, maybe they use these other terms instead. And so by using a variety of terms, you're going to capture more of the literature that's out there. And then you want to think about limits. So for the search that we're going to do in just a minute, uh, I'm going to limit to English language. If we're thinking about recent literature, again, I could limit to the last five years, maybe the last three years. Depending on what I'm doing with my search, maybe I want to limit my publication type. So I could limit to, again, randomized controlled trials as an example. And then CINAHL has a limit where you can specify that you only want to look at peer-reviewed articles, which I find to be very helpful. One of the other things that CINAHL has, and I didn't mention it here, um, but CINAHL has a feature where you can limit to specific journal subsets. And so I know, I believe it's in the, the BSN classes, they have an assignment where they need to find literature specifically from nursing journals. And so you can specify in CINAHL that you only want literature from nursing journals. So even though CINAHL is known 
to be a database for nursing literature, there is other content in there. So to specifically focus just on the nursing literature, there's a limit that you can apply. And then you want to go ahead and run your search. And your search strategy is going to vary from database to database. Most databases, such as CINAHL or Scopus, you just kind of plug in keywords and phrases. The only database that is a little bit different is either Medline or PubMed, which use mesh terms. But in general, your strategy is going to be pretty similar. And then once you run your search and take a look at your results, um, you want to see are they actually the results that you expected? Are they relevant? Do they answer your research question? And if not, think about your search strategy and how you can make it better or how you can change it. So are you using the right search terms? Did you use the right combination of terms? And we'll talk about that in a minute, joining terms with or and and. And then are you using a different, should you use a different database? Are you using the correct database for your topic? And then, you know, if you've thought about all those things and you're still having trouble, even if you find one good article on your topic, that is a great place to start because you look at that article's reference list and see if there's other literature there that you can use. Um, in Scopus, and we'll talk about this a little bit more when I, we do the Scopus search together, you can see if other articles have cited a particular article since it was published, and that will potentially lead you to additional literature. You can look at an article's keywords and medical subject headings and see if there's keywords they use that perhaps you didn't think of. And then some databases um, like PubMed or Scopus have a link that says similar articles. So you could click on that link and you can see if there's anything there you can use. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually go into CINAHL and we're going to run the search. We're going to do the same in Scopus and then depending if we have time, we're going to do it in Medline as well. All right, so hopefully what you're seeing now is the Himmelfarb homepage. And we're going to go ahead and click on CINAHL over in the left-hand column. And I have accessed this database recently from home, and so it's not prompting me to log in, but if I hadn't, it would prompt me to log in. I'm going to kind of um, go over this, the basic steps I would take, um, which might be review for you. Uh, but you can see that when you go into CINAHL, you have three search boxes. And basically what you want to do is you want to use one search box for each of your concepts. And so in our sample search about nursing interventions, uh, which nursing interventions are found to be effective in avoiding pressure ulcers in critical care patients? When I showed you that chart of keywords, I broke it down into three main concepts. So nursing interventions, pressure ulcers, and critical care. So I'm going to use one box per concept. So for our first concept, uh, which was nursing interventions, I'm going to type in the keywords or phrases that I had in my chart. And so when you type in a phrase, you want to put it in quotes because that's telling the database to search for that exact phrase. Oops, and I'm spelling this wrong, sorry. And so because I want to look for nursing intervention or nursing interventions, I can use that asterisk like that and it's going to search for the singular and the plural. And then in my chart, I also had the phrase nursing care. So what you want to do is you want to join your synonyms with a capital OR. So you can see that I have my phrases in quotes. I've used the truncation symbol for the first phrase. Um, and that's basically telling the database, I want you to look for nursing intervention or interventions or the word nurse or the phrase nursing care. So either one of those. And then in my second box, I'm going to use that for all of my pressure ulcer terms. Um, so I can do pressure ulcer with a truncation symbol or pressure sore or bed sore oops, or pressure in and I want it to look for injury or injuries. Okay, and then in the third box, I have the phrases related to critical care. And there's probably other synonyms I haven't thought of, um, but I'll just type in the ones that I had on my list.
Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to scroll down and I want to apply some limits to this search. Um, so we talked about uh, English language, so I'm going to select that one. Um, let's do the last. Um, we'll do the last five years. So I'm going to do 2015 to 2019. Let's do peer reviewed. Um, you can see that there's a lot of options here, but let's just go with those for now. All right, so I'm going to scroll back up. All right, so let me go ahead and click on search, and let's see what we get. All right, so what you can see is uh, it's showing us there's 10 per page, but it's telling us here that we got 54 articles. So that's actually not bad. That's, in my mind, a pretty decent number, not too overwhelming. Um, and so when you're looking at your search results, I want to just point out a couple things. So um, to the right over here, you can see this little, it looks like a piece of paper with a magnifying glass. And if you hold your cursor over it, you should see this little box that pops up, which gives you um, part of the abstract. So it lets you kind of read a little bit about it, see if it's something you're interested in. The other thing I wanted to point out, and hopefully you can see this, but under this first article, there's a blue full text at Himmelfarb box. Um, and so that, that box that says full text at Himmelfarb indicates that it is most likely something that we do have in full text. So you should be able to click on this full text at Himmelfarb link, um, and it's either going to take you to directly to the full text, or you, know, you might have to do one other click, but that box indicates that we should have the full text. Let me scroll down a little bit. Number five. So number five, instead of the full text at Himmelfarb link, it has a find it at Himmelfarb link. So that's an indication that it's probably something that we do not have. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this to show you what it looks like. Oh, and that's interesting because it gives us full text access here. So that's interesting. Generally, <laughs> That box means that we don't have it online, but for some, whatever reason, it looks like we do here. Um, what I was going to say, though, is that um, we do offer an interlibrary loan service, which means if it's something that you want that we don't have, you can put in an online request for it, and we can get it for you from another institution. Um, and we'll get it for you electronically, send it to you electronically. Um, you are allowed 15 free requests. Um, in the fall semester and the spring semester. Um, and so you can go ahead and make requests if you need articles. You will not be charged unless you request over 15 articles. Um, so if you see th something that you want that you know we don't have, you can consider putting a request for it. You just have to remember that it could take a day or two. Um, so you have to think about that too. But it looks like, um, especially for this search, there's a lot of full text options. So a couple other things about CINAHL. Um, so 54, as I mentioned, seems like a pretty good amount. If we ran this search um, and we decided that we wanted to put additional limits on it, so let's say we forgot to put a date range limit on it or we forgot to limit to English language, we can actually do that from here too. So you can see on the left side of the screen, there's this refine results box or column. So we could actually apply some additional limits here if we wanted to. And just a couple of things about CINAHL that I'll mention. So um, let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the article number one here. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Uh, so the things I wanted to point out are the menu that's over on the right-hand side of the page. So you can do a lot of things with this. Um, as you can see, you can print, you can email, you can save, um, you can cite it. So you have a lot of options here. The other thing I wanted to mention is if you kind of take a look in the middle of the record, it gives you in blue um, some subjects that uh, the database has assigned to this article. So if you found this article was right on target for what you were looking for and you were having trouble coming up with others, you could see what 
subject areas or keywords they used here, and then potentially use those in your own search to, to try to find similar articles. Okay, um, so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to go to Scopus and see if we can do the same search. Okay, so I'm here on the home page. Um, and I'm going to click on Scopus over here on the left. So um, as I mentioned before, Scopus is a huge multidisciplinary database. Um, so if I'm doing a search, let's say for nursing literature, I'll always go to CINAHL first. And then usually Scopus is my second database I'll go to. Um, because it's so big, again, usually I find stuff here that I haven't already found. Um, and if I'm doing a search even related to a different topic, so let's say I'm doing a literature search that's something more medically related. I'll usually go to Medline or PubMed first, Scopus second. Um, so I, I usually go to Scopus for, for everything because I think it's a really good resource. So I'm going to go in here. Okay. So you can see that Scopus has one search box. Now, because our, our question has three concepts, we want three search boxes. So I can go over here to the right and use this plus sign and add two more search boxes. So I'm going to do the search the exact same way that I did it in CINAHL as far as um, entering my phrases and also entering phrases in quotes. Now, the one thing about Scopus that um, is a little bit different is that um, you don't have to type in, at least Scopus tells you this in the help section, you don't have to type in multiple forms of the word because it will automatically look for alternate forms of the word. So for example, um, for our nursing interventions concept, I should just be able to type in, oh, and you can see I did this search before when I was practicing, mm -hmm. nursing intervention, and it should capture the plural as well. Um, so Scopus is a little bit different in that way. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to do our pressure ulcer um, concept. And then the last column, uh, you can see I did this one too, so I will just click on that. So you can see underneath here, there is a box or a tab that says, or a link that says limit. Um, now, Scopus does not offer a lot of limits, as you can see on the front page here. Um, we can limit by date range, um, document type, uh, that's about it. However, we, and you'll see in a minute, that we can actually run the search and there's other limits that we can apply. Um, so from this page, uh, again, let's do 2014 to the present, and we'll leave it at that. Um, and then let me click on search. So interestingly, that is very interesting, we only got 51 documents. Um, oh, that is a little bit surprising. Um, but you can see over on the left, again, there's a column that says refine results. So we could apply some additional limits here, um, such as language, um, et cetera. So it's very similar to the way that we ran the search in CINAHL. Using the ORs, we could apply limits. And you'll see the same thing here, where you're going to notice the find it at Himmelfarb or the full text at Himmelfarb. So um, those are how you would get to the full text if it's available. You can see that there's a view abstract link, so we can take a look at the abstract. And then you'll notice on the right, far right column, uh, where it says cited by. Um, so these articles, as you can see, are published very recently. Um, but since they were published, this will tell you how many articles have cited a particular article. So uh, number two here, let's say that this one was right on target for what I wanted. Um, I could click on this number one and see who cited it and you know, see if this article is also something that I could use. So let's go back up to the top. Sorry about that. So again, number one, let me actually click on this. 
All right, so you're seeing the full abstract. Let me scroll down a little bit. So this one's actually really, when was this published? Just last month. So there isn't any keywords or references here yet. So let's see if we can find those in another one. Um, so let me scroll down a little bit. All right, let me try, let me try number 10. So this one was published in 2017, so a little bit older. Let me scroll down. So you'll see, there's not that many, but you'll see some keywords here. Um, and then if you scroll down a little bit more, I can see the list of this article's references. So again, another potential way to find relevant literature. So I can look back and see you know, what that article has cited, and then I can go forward and see who has cited this article. Uh, so ways to kind of link me to other relevant literature. And that was just a really brief overview of Scopus, but the, the way you approach the search is very similar to the way we did it in CINAHL, where um, you type in your keywords, you join them with OR, you put the phrases in quotes, apply your limits, review your search results. So, um, I'd like to show you a search in Medline now um, because the two databases that we've talked about so far, the search strategies and the way you approach it is very similar. Um, Medline is very different. So I wanted to show you that. And we don't have to spend a lot of time on it, but I thought it'd be helpful just to know what the difference is. So uh, you'll see here on the homepage, there's a link to PubMed and Medline. So for the most part, these two databases have the same content. Um, just different interfaces. So PubMed um, is a database that's put out by the National Library of Medicine. It indexes all of the medical journals that are out there. It also has nursing literature, public health literature, um, and PubMed is the free online version. So anybody can just go online to PubMed.gov and they can get to PubMed. The reason if you're using this database is to go through Himmelfarb because then you can link to the full text journals that we provide. So that's why it's a good idea to always go through Himmelfarb. Um, and Medline is the same content for the most part, just a different interface. So if you were doing a literature search, you wouldn't have to search both of these. You could pick one or the other. So let's go into Medline. Okay. So when you search Medline, it's very different than searching the other databases because you can't just type all your keywords in like we did before. You have to search for each concept individually, find the appropriate medical subject heading, and combine them. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we do this search. Um, but people at the National Library of Medicine are sitting down and reading every article and assigning medical subject headings to the articles based on the concepts. And so um, let me give you an example of why, why this might be important. And this is a non-medical example, but I think it illustrates the point. So let's say that you're doing a broad, comprehensive literature search, and you want to find all the articles out there that are written about soda. So you're thinking about all the ways that all the literature out there is talking about soda. And so if we were doing a search like this in CINAHL or in Scopus, we'd have to make a huge list of synonyms and keywords that's going to capture all that literature. So for example, our list of keywords might have soda, Sprite, Coke, Diet Coke, Mountain Dew, all the different keywords that represent that concept of soda. If we do a search in Medline, instead of having to type in all those words, we could perhaps use the MeSH term carbonated beverage, and it's going to automatically find all of those articles. So you don't necessarily have to think about all the different ways to say it. You can pick this one term, and it's going to automatically capture everything. So that's one advantage. Um, and I think also sometimes, depending on the topic, using MeSH, you can do a very focused search. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So in that example, about the nursing interventions and pressure ulcers in critical care patients. Our first concept was nursing interventions. 
So I had keywords nursing interventions and nursing care. So let's go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to type in one of those concepts into the box. So let's type in nursing care. And I'm going to click on search. So in this case, basically what it does is it brings back the medical subject headings that it thinks you're interested in based on what you typed in the box. And so because I've done this search before, I knew that nursing care was a mesh term, so this one seems pretty easy. So you can see it brought up in blue the medical subject heading that I indeed am interested in. And you can actually see it's already selected it for me. Every time you do a search, you're going to see a list of mesh terms in blue. Um, and you're going to also see at the very bottom of that list where it gives you the option of searching for exactly what you typed into the box. And it's going to say search as keyword. Now, ideally, you want to find the mesh term that represents your concept. However, that's not always the case. You're not always going to find a mesh term that exactly matches what you are looking for. And so in that case, if none of the mesh terms matches, then you can choose this to search for the phrase nursing care, if, if that makes sense. Um, so there's a lot of other kind of features in Medline, but I wanted to just kind of show you the overview searching strategy. Um, so we picked our, or it picked it for us, the nursing care mesh term. So I'm going to click on continue. It's giving me a list of subheadings about nursing care. So if I'm interested in a very particular aspect of nursing care, I can select one or more of these subheadings. And that's simply a way to kind of narrow it down. Um, typically, I start with all of them because I don't want to miss anything. And I usually, if I feel like my numbers are overwhelming, I'll go back and select some of these later. But I typically start out broad. So I'm going to include them all, and I'm going to continue. So here is the first search we did for our first concept. So you can see just for the concept of nursing care, there's over 28,000 articles. Now we're going to do the same thing for our next concept. So our next concept is pressure ulcer. So let's go ahead and type in pressure ulcer and search. Now these are, these are working out well here because it's giving us one mesh term. Um, so we don't have to do a lot of thinking about it. You know, in fact, it's already selected it. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to continue. Um, if we wanted a particular aspect of pressure ulcers, um, in this case, we're interested in avoiding pressure ulcers. So potentially, we could click on one or more of these subheadings. And it might even be, we'll have to see what we get as results. But we might want to click on prevention and control. We might even want to click on nursing here. Um, but let's go broad for now. So we'll include all of them. OK. So you can kind of see we're building our search concept by concept here. Um, so our last one is critical care. So let's do critical care. And again, easy. Here it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on continue. Do the same thing. Um, so this search was, was very simple because it was, we didn't have to use a lot of uh, brain power to pick, figure out the mesh terms. Um, and that, I think, is the challenge many times. Um, so now that we've picked the appropriate mesh term for each concept, we're going to combine these. So we're going to select all of the searches. And we're going to combine them with AND because we want articles that talk about nursing care and pressure ulcers and critical care. Um, I didn't practice the search today, so let's go ahead and do it and see what we get, if anything. Oops. OK, so we got four articles. Now, obviously, we can look at four articles very quickly. Um, if the number of articles we got there was a larger number, um, and even just for the sake of going through the process, we could apply some limits, just like we did in the other databases. So we could apply English language. Um, we could apply a publication date limit. So we'll do 2014 
to 2019, and I'll click on search, and it will apply that to the last search we did, which leaves us with a whopping one article. So let's go down and look at that article. So um, I think you're probably thinking the same thing I am, that you know that there's more literature out there than just this one article. Um, and so let's say that we want to try to figure out how we can find the other articles on this topic, um, because it seems like we used all the right MeSH terms. So what we, one of the things we could do um, is we could look at the MeSH terms for this article to see if there's anything that we could kind of take out of there. So to the right, you'll see a complete reference link. And let's click on that. And then if we scroll down, if you look, there's a very long list here. Um, and you'll see all the MeSH terms that were assigned to this article. Um, so we could take a look and see if there's anything that we could use to expand our search. Um, so we used critical care, we used nursing care, pressure ulcer. Um, so it looks like, I'm not sure there's anything else we can take from here. Um, this is also a good example where there's probably other terms that we want to include that maybe um, aren't represented in the MeSH terms that we chose. And I think that's one of the difficult things about using Medline is that um, it's hard to figure out what the right MeSH terms are sometimes. And so we used nursing care as a MeSH term. Um, but in our original question, we were thinking about nursing interventions. And so even though nursing care and nursing interventions may be similar, they're not quite the same. Um, and so we want to think about how we could get to those other articles. And so um, actually, let's search for the word or the phrase nursing intervention. So looking at the nursing, or looking at, excuse me, the subject headings that come up, you can kind of see that, you know, we use nursing care. There's not really any others, at least in my opinion, that really fit. Um, so we might want to pick this last one. So we're going to search for that as a, as a phrase. I know this gets a little bit confusing um, with the MeSH terms. The good thing, though, about Medline is that it's keeping a running list at the top of all the different searches we did. So we could try different combinations of all these terms. So let's try, in fact, um, let's try pressure ulcer and nursing intervention. And let's combine those and see if we get anything. So we got a few more. We got 17. Um, and to some degree, I think that it is, as you can tell, trial and error. You know, so we tried the MeSH terms that we thought. We only got one. How can we make our search better? So we could potentially, instead of using just the MeSH term, we could use it, search it as a phrase. Um, and so you can see where Medline gets a little bit complicated because it's hard to figure out what the right terms are. Um, but it is good in that you can try different terms and then try different combinations of terms. Um, you know, I think. It takes a bit of practice to kind of master the skill of using the MeSH terms, but I wanted to kind of just show you that the way of approaching a search in Medline is extremely different than it is when you search the other databases. Thinking about what we talked about tonight, um, I want to just highlight some things that I want you to take away from this session. So whenever you're doing database searches, you're looking for literature, always start at the Himmelfarb homepage. Um, because you can get to the databases we subscribe to and access the full text if it's available. Before thinking about, or I'm sorry, before choosing a database um, and you know, going right in to enter search terms, think about them first um, and even potentially write them down and make a list of your key concepts and synonyms. And then just remember when you're doing your searches, especially in CINAHL and Scopus, have one search box per concept and then join your synonyms with or in, that in each search box like we did before. Put your phrases in quotes. Um, also, don't forget about the truncation symbol. Use the limits to refine your search, so especially language and date range. Um, and then when you're doing a comprehensive literature search, 
always use multiple databases because you want to make sure you capture the literature that's out there. And even though there's overlap in databases, there's definitely unique content uh, that you don't want to miss. So make sure that you think about which databases are relevant and, and search multiple databases in order to be comprehensive. That's really all the content I had. Um, you know, if you have questions in the future about using the resources or you need help searching, please don't hesitate to email me or call me. Um, I'm happy to help you with anything. Um, also on the Himmelfarb homepage, there's a little chat box that pops out on the right-hand side, and so feel free to chat with a reference librarian. Uh, well, thank you very much for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. Please don't hesitate to contact me in the future if you have questions.